Welcome aboard. It's time to grab your wave, swim out into the ocean of ideas, and see if you can catch a wave like that sails pipeline curling up over the horizon there. With the captain of the ship today here, uh, Matt Hines. How are you, Paul? I'm doing good. Did you hear that uh, news report? We played the news right before the show, and they said that the Navy did a study of all their officers and their ships. 87% of them really don't know how to steer a ship. 87 percent of them <laughs> well i mean so my uh, my grandpa was in the in world war ii he was in the navy he was a machinist um and his job was to keep the thing running yeah. um he probably couldn't didn't know how to steer it either i would imagine <laughs> that you know that that knowledge is not necessary for the majority of people on boats oh my god I know? well uh, the admiral who did the study said it's sobering <laughs> <laughs> It's sobered up a bunch of drunk sailors here that most of them don't really know how to steer the boat here. Hopefully you're going to steer us in the right direction today. We are going to attempt to steer our listeners in the right direction on a sales and marketing pipeline today. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on Sales Pipeline Radio. For those of you joining us live, we are here live every Thursday at 11.30 Pacific, 2.30 Eastern. Thank you for those of us that are always joining us on the Funnel Media Radio Network. For those of you on the podcast, thanks very much for subscribing and listening. You can catch all of our episodes at the iTunes Store and Google Play. And then, as as always, every episode of Sales Pipeline Radio, past, present, and future, is available at salespipelineradio.com. We, every week, are featuring some of the best and brightest minds in B2B sales and marketing. Today is no different. Very excited to have with us Patrick Morrissey. He's the CMO of Altify, a proud graduate of Iowa State University. Go Cyclones. Patrick, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Matt. It's great to be here. Uh, so, you know, I will, I will, uh, I will bypass the questions about uh, Navy competence and Cyclone football. We'll get right to the says the B two B marketing uh, side of things. We want to talk a little first of all. Talk a little bit about what Altify does to, for those of you that, for those on the on the show that don't know what Altify does for for B two B sellers. Absolutely, we're in the business of helping companies build the next generation of sellers. And the problem we're really attacking is how do you affect a digital sales transformation? And we help companies by doing that in, in three ways. Number one, helping you win the opportunities that matter. Number two, helping you drive maximum revenue, you know, penetration and build the, rev- the relationships with the customer you already have. And the third piece of the puzzle is all about how do we help you drive process with a combination of methodology, you know, coaching and best practice that's built right into our applications to drive not only a disciplined sales process, but continuous improvement across your entire team. So customers for us look like everybody from, you know, the who's who in, in technology, like, you know, Tableau or Salesforce or Autodesk to British Telecom and Comcast Business in, in the comm space in, in Honeywell and manufacturing. Speaking today to Patrick Morrissey, he's the CMO of Altify, and you know, you talk about what you're doing with teams, uh, you know, on B2B side. One of the things that I thought really stood out on your profile in LinkedIn is the fact that you focus on building teams. You know, in your career leading marketing teams, what are some of the keys you find to building really high performance marketing teams uh, that can deliver results? Yeah, it's it's an interesting question because I think everybody comes to the notion of team a little bit differently. But I would say, particularly in marketing, that marketing is fundamentally a team sport, and you know, not just on your team, but the extension of marketing into sales. So there's a few different things I would call out in terms of you know focus on teams that I have found to be successful over time. One is, as a general rule, when you're trying to put together a team, I would have a strong bias for athletes versus experts because the pace of change across every business and across every market is so quick now that there are a lot of people who may be expert in a particular sub-discipline who can't transfer those skills and can't help other members of the team. So one, I'd look for you know, athletes, not experts, and people who can really you know, look to solve a problem. The second thing when you're thinking about marketing is really having an understanding and a, and a focus on learning to try to understand the customer in the market. And a lot of that comes out of my, my heritage in product marketing. But, but also, I think there's a lot of uh, bias that people, particularly on the sales side of this discussion, have that marketing does a lot of hand-waving, doesn't really actually understand what's going on. And so you need people across the entirety of the team to really be focused on not just the mission of the company and, and trying to produce a result, but really understanding the customer in the market. And then the third thing I would say, you know, context specifically, that uh, helps inform teams is look for people who have sales DNA because more often than not, the 
having lived the life of somebody in sales, and you had a great example, uh, Lisa Fink was on with you a couple weeks ago from Tableau. She is a great uh, example that proves the, the thesis in my mind, which is people who started early in their career or have had experience in selling have a lot more empathy for the realities of what it takes to you know, generate an opportunity and get a deal done, but also what results look like as measured by revenue. And I think all those things are important. I think those great, great, great answers. And I think, uh, you know, having that sales mentality, at least having some level of revenue responsibility, I think is really key. What are some of the ways that you can impart that upon people that may have been career marketers, you know, that maybe have never carried a bag, have never had, you know, been done, doing sales before, that maybe in the past in marketing have been really measured based on activities and volume as opposed to metrics that you can buy a beer with? Is that something you can train? Is that something that you can, or is that something you have to look for a certain mentality or, or mindset for? the beginning yeah it's an it's an interesting question and i would say that a little bit of it is is a focus a little bit of it is learned and some people are just naturally have that that spirit and go get it and what i mean is that from a, a learning perspective the first thing is to level set the conversation particularly in marketing that marketing exists as a revenue generating function so I think a lot of these conversations don't get out of the blocks correctly or, or, or are misunderstood, you know, not only in marketing but across the business because there's this bias that marketing does stuff and it generates leads and good leads turn into pipeline and forever after amen and good luck and then people go on. The reality is from a business owner's perspective and certainly from the CEO's perspective, you know, the measurement is earnings and, and, and results on a quarterly basis, on a yearly basis. And, and if you're public, that's an EPS calculation, right? So one, the, the first piece of the puzzle is understand contribution to revenue and orchestrate all the behaviors in the team across that. The second thing is to really look at spending time with the salespeople and with the customers that you know some people naturally come with that experience as we were talking about a second ago but uh back to one of the best lessons i ever saw in real life uh, to, to help illustrate this point is i worked for you know dave kellogg at business objects years ago and he used to send out a survey to the entirety of the sales team and it had two questions on it the first question was it was a laundry list there was a, a pull down list of every person who was in marketing and the salespeople were all asked do you know these people and the second question was the exact same list. Please identify those people who had actually helped you win a deal. The, as you might suspect, just by the way I lay that out, obviously that's going to over bias to more senior people and people in product marketing, particularly in a technology context in this case, that are out on the street or in the field or in front of customers. But what it was was a clear message that if you weren't doing something that somehow correlated to sales and helping us be successful, then you may need to rethink what you're up to. And the second thing was, um, you know, we're keeping score on this. Like everything needs to be measured in your activity. So if you're not doing it now, now's a good time to go find somebody in sales and figure out how you can help. So we're talking today at Sales Pipeline Radio with Patrick Morrissey. He's the CMO of Altify. And before we have to take a quick break here in a, in a couple of minutes, Patrick, just want to talk a little bit about differentiation in the sea of what is it like 5,500 or maybe more, you know, sales and marketing tools out there. And I think, you know, everyone's got a different story and a way to sort of tell their story and differentiate. But in the mind of the buyer, you talk about like a B2B, you know, B2B or C CRO, chief revenue officer, VP of sales. It can all blur together. What are some of the keys to really creating differentiation in a significant sea of um uh, of, of competitors. Well, one is the idea that you need to try to look to, I think the high ground for marketers and the high ground for differentiation is looking to create your own category because different sells and different wins. And you can see that in lots of different examples, um, or, you know, around different market spaces, but trying to be as different as possible to carve out your own unique space and the language and the focus that you have is one piece. The second piece around differentiation is really starting from putting the customer at the center and what does the customer want, what does the customer need. You can decompose any sales cycle down to its root, which is fundamentally people and problems. I need to find somebody who matters, who has some purchasing authority, but I really need to understand you know, her role, her needs in her business, her market, and really provide some insights to them. Because nobody got up this morning, you know, or, or most of us didn't get up this morning, looking for, in my case, you know, new technology, new apps, or for other people, it's platforms, or it's industrial solutions, or whatever it might be. But I'm intensely interested with anybody who can come 
with a new understanding or a new insight to me in terms of what's in my business, what's happening with my team or my people, what's going to help move the needle, and give me some insights that are going to help me manage more effectively. And I think one of the common traps around differentiation is it starts from, hey, we've got the newest, best, schmumble thing that's really going to be awesome, and let me tell you, because we all get bombarded with these emails. And, you know, not only are the emails poorly written, but they vomit a bunch of stuff at me that has nothing to do with what I'm thinking about right now, and I just hit delete. I'll ask you about that, because I think the messages you're giving are really, really good in terms of how to you know, create some value-added, insight-based message to begin with. But, I mean, as the CMO of a large technology company, um, I'm sure you're the recipient of a lot of these messages and approaches as well. So, independent of the message, are there certain approaches that work better to, to get a hold of you? Are there certain channels, certain tactics that seem to stand out to, to, to earn your attention in, in, in advance of having an interesting message? Uh, yeah, I think there's a couple things that stand out. One is, you know, sending sending me some numbers or some case studies. I think the crown jewels of any of these communications that stand out is show me somebody who looks like me, Matt, who's produced a real world meaningful dollars and cents result, and explain to me very crisply in three sentences how you can do that for me. That uh, and I had a had a vendor like the best email I've seen in the last year. You mentioned uh, Cyclone Football at the top of the program which I'm happy to do a follow-up segment on if we ever have time. <laughs> the, the, uh, I got an email from somebody uh, when I first started who sent me a clip of a, a Cyclone football touchdown and said, hey, well, I'd love to talk to you about football, which you're really probably interested in is pipeline because you probably didn't get out of the parking lot before the CEO was asking you specifics about pipeline metrics and here's how we can help. And I immediately forwarded to my team and said, please get this guy on the calendar immediately. I'm sad to say the end of the story doesn't end well with I made a massive purchasing decision because what they were selling wasn't as good as his email, but it was that combination of show me something different, show me something personal, and give me something contextually that starts to say how you're going to help me. That's the key to the castle. Love it. We're going to take a quick break here, pay a couple bills. We'll be right back uh, more with Patrick Morrissey. He's the CMO of Altify. We'll be back after a couple of commercials. You're talking to Sales Pipeline Radio. In a world where the speed of innovation and change in B2B marketing has never been greater, the only thing bigger is the need for clarity, for a blueprint, for a guide to what's really working. And how about a way to apply it specifically today to increase sales pipeline growth, velocity, and most of all, conversion? That's what you'll find in the Modern Marketer's Field Guide. And... Amazingly, you can download it for free. HeinzMarketing.com, just like it sounds, H-E-I-N-Z-M-A-R-K-E-T-I-N-G. It encompasses the entire sales and marketing cycle, but in quick bursts with lots of specific, actionable ideas, strategies, tactics you can put to work right away, like today. The loaded table of contents helps you narrow in and tackle a problem. And it's something you can come back to over and over again as a reference guide. Why not download your free copy of the Modern Marketer's Field Guide? It's free. HeinzMarketing.com, just like it sounds. H-E-I-N-Z, marketing.com. All right, back to Matt and his guests. Thank you, Paul. It is very clear after the first half of this episode, we're going to have to work on the field expedient unit of Sales Pipeline Radio. <laughs> we are, uh, I apologize for those of you that are listening to this. We got a little, uh, little um, compromised audio quality today. We are recording from the home office. Uh, the uh, the uh, Sales Pipeline Radio's uh, middle son had uh, eye surgery yesterday, so uh-huh. he's home recovering today. So we are, uh, we're working this from home. But uh, thanks very much, everyone, for joining us. Paul, I, you know, I figured you were out on a ship. That's what it sounded like, because it's almost like a way wavy, watery sound. So I figured you were out. so weird. No, I'm literally, I mean, literally at the kitchen table and it's pretty quiet here. So (laughs) I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to make sure if I kind of, if I blame Comcast, does that mean I get free Wi-Fi? I think think they come back and fix it. And we talk about that. I think so. I don't know. No, okay, fine. Well, thank you very much for joining us again, Sales by Prime Radio. We got more with Patrick Morrissey. He's the CMO of Altify, and uh, we've been talking a lot about uh, well, just everything from building uh, effective teams to uh, differentiating yourselves on the sales technology side. We talked a little bit, uh, Patrick, about just marketers that are building a mentality of, of revenue responsibility. How inside of Altify are you connected with the sales organization? How do you both uh, create strategic alignment with sales? as well as how do you operationalize that on a day-to-day basis? 
It's a great question, Matt. In, in, in my case, I spend a fair amount of time. I'm the executive sponsor on a couple of deals and a couple of accounts every quarter. So I have some long-term relationships where I'm responsible for the overall relationship the, versus the quarterly deal-specific things where I'm looking to help. But, but as often as possible, I'm trying to get out on the, the field with the sales teams and go sit in meetings and talk to customers is first and foremost where – I, I think I have the most value and I find the most value in it and find the most learning is really understanding the day of the life of a sales leader. And the instrumentation piece is key. And one of the things that, that we allow you to do at Altify or the way we keep score of it internally is the notion of an account plan or a portfolio plan, which is capability that we sell that's native in Salesforce, which allows, you know, not just the, the frontline, you know, salesperson, the AE, but also his manager or the VP, et cetera, to track the overall performance of their portfolio, as well as to do things like assign actions and activities that are really based on account objectives to the marketing team and to myself individually. So now we start to get line of sight between the what is marketing doing to help sales sell and really make it actionable by putting it in an account plan so we can help the AEs not only fill in the white space and generate new opportunities in their territory, but everybody can keep score on what are the activities to surround the customer to assist the AE and to do team selling in a way that's going to deliver value for our end customers. Patrick, do you believe that salespeople should, or excuse me, that marketing folks should uh, have you know, a, a period of time when they're on the sales floor, whether that's playing an SDR role or you know just carrying a bag? Is that something that is valuable, or is there is there alternative ways to sort of build that mentality? Yeah, I think that's valuable, but that's not necessarily always practical, and that doesn't necessarily align with how some people organize. I think uh, a couple of the hacks that you can start to apply, Matt, to, to do that, or that I've seen is. Number one, bringing some of those people into individual sales calls, even if it's in listen-only mode or, or webcast, so they can understand the dialogue, they can understand the questions, they get the vibe of what people are seeing day to day. Even better if they can get on a plane and, and go sit in a meeting. Uh, the other thing I've seen work really well is for, for marketing people particularly to talk, not just to the AEs, but oftentimes where the rubber meets the road is the frontline sales manager. Go find you know somebody who's got five, eight, uh, five, eight, six, seven, eight direct reports and really understand you know, what he or she is going through in terms of how do they think about pipeline, how do they bucket their time between coaching the reps versus working on deal strategy versus thinking about pipeline versus you know management and reporting to really try to pick up not just the where is the energy and where are the problems, but also how do they think, how do they prioritize, which is a leading indicator of, of mapping to something that's going to help everybody on the team be more successful. So many different directions we can take this conversation. Now we've only got a few more minutes here before we're going to run out of time. But you know, curious how all this plays with the idea of customer lifetime value. Once you've got that customer on board, that's great. It's maybe the end of the sales funnel, but it's kind of the middle of the revenue customer lifetime value bow tie, if you will. How do you manage both sides, and how do you balance the need to continue to fill the boat with new logos while also, you know, really putting a strategic focus on you know keeping people happy and satisfied and and, and uh, paying for as long as possible. There's, a, there's multiple cuts to that question. I'd say a couple different things. One is being really deep on the idea of who is the customer, not just from a logo or for all the excitement around account-based marketing. It's really people-based marketing. When you get underneath the details about how do you upsell a customer, it's not just doing the first transaction, but it's also looking at, okay, who else is on the team that we're involved with this? What other problems are we helping to solve? Are we really robust in coming back to them as a team, not just the AE? Because the problem, particularly in technology, is the AE hands off to the CSM and is never seen again. And then when expectations aren't met, there's a lot of aggravation that gets in the way of the upsell. And so from the front end, from a sales point of view, this is the start of a relationship that should be expected to be long-term. Otherwise, why are you wasting valuable marketing dollars and cycles going after these people in the the first place? And on the back half is, what is the plan to drive the, the customer success and to make sure that the service is as good as the sell and that both sides are have the ability to keep score on that so that we can look at the next deal and the next deal and the next deal. And we consistently see in our most successful customers that the ones, if you think about some of the names I mentioned at the top, whether you're, you know, in the you know telecom business or you're in the technology business or you're in the manufacturing business, the more and the deeper you understand the customer and can proactively provide insight, the more chance you have to drive the upsell. And you have a lot less friction on the upsell than, than you have you know, trying to get the initial deal done to begin with. So anybody who's not thinking about a long-term relationship is really having the wrong kind of a pipeline conversation to begin with. 
Yeah, I would agree with that. Just a couple more minutes here with Patrick Morrissey, the CMO of Altify. Let's talk a little bit about the, the need for agility. Uh, we, you know, we got best laid plans you created at the beginning of the year. We're here uh, recording this almost the midpoint of 2018. And, you know, best laid plans often don't survive first contact with the battlefield. Best laid plans, Paul, to have this uh, high quality audio situation here doesn't always work. So you find you find the expedient figure and sometimes you just power through. But also, you know, there's a, there's a level of adjustments, you know, along the way. What are you guys do internally to make sure you are keeping your eye on the end goal, but making adjustments as you execute and see what's working and what's not? Yeah, great question. And there's a couple different things. From a, from a sales and a go-to-market perspective, the, the marketing team on our side is spending time with the account teams while they're doing their account plans and really looking at what are the set of behaviors down to the individual AE or the individual account uh, activity. Some of those may be more top of the funnel, just awareness. We're trying to expand our surface area in the account from a, a program's plan versus the other side of this, which is you know folks on my team who are directly interacting with customers or we're doing things like custom customer videos and co-branding some of our sales content and our best practices around opportunity account management with our clients and actually then helping support their mid-year you know, SKO or, or mid-KO efforts so that they don't have to have the homework, they don't have to have the extra cycles, and they're getting some value add from the vendor. And those are the sorts of things to the point you were, the question you were just asking earlier, where it's we can start to calibrate either what are we seeing and while we're looking at the metrics and the numbers down to a program level, but also from an account specific area, where can we over index to make sure that we're providing extra, extra investment that's going to help us outperform for the end of the year? Because, you know, Q4 for us and everybody else really tells the tale. Yeah, absolutely. Wrapping up here with Patrick Morrissey of Altify. And the last question I want to ask you here, we usually ask most of our guests is, you know, who are the, who are the people uh, that have most influenced you in your marketing career? These can be people that are alive or dead. They can be professors, authors, peers, former managers. But as you think back of the, the people that have had the biggest impact, you know, who are, who are a couple that stand out for you? Great question. And I would say that there's two people that stand out for me. One I referenced earlier, Dave Kellogg, who's now the, the CMO of Host Analytics who was the, the guy who really gave me what I consider one half of the core definition of any kind of marketing conversation. He was all about the, you know, marketing exists to help sales sell, which I would round into marketing at, at its base is fundamentally about two things. How do you build relationships or brand? And, and how do you help sales sell? And uh, the second person is Christopher Lockhead, who now has his own podcast and is the author of the book, you know, Play Bigger, and I think he's got a new book coming out who was the, the chief marketing officer I worked for back at Science and was religious about the need to, to be different and to be direct and to be as aggressive as possible in carving out a clear and distinct value proposition. And I think both of those things are, are just required for you know how the world exists today in marketing. So I point at both of those people as and and Dave publishes a blog, you know, Kel blog and Christopher's got his own uh, book and uh, podcast and it's easy to find out more from them i would i would say those are two great resources for your audience love it well thank you very much patrick appreciate all your insights today patrick morrissey he's the cmo at altify we covered a lot of ground in a very short amount of time if you like what you heard here you want to hear this again you can check out a replay of this episode on salespipelineradio.com join us next week we got a lot of great guests coming up on the sales and the marketing side trying to flip it around get a lot of just marketing leaders sales leaders marketing and sales operations leaders people on the front lines that are doing the good work uh that are helping people hit their numbers and b2b companies around the world uh thanks very much for joining us look forward to seeing you next week. For my great producer, Paul, this is Matt Hines. Thanks for listening. Sales Pipeline Radio. You've been listening again to another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio, brought to you by the good folks at Matt Hines Marketing. Sailing the seven seas for the latest ideas and answers.